Oh yes! Oh yes! Oh yes! Town criers, raise your voices and together cry with me. Remembering those brave men and women in our history. The battle's over, a nation's tribute remembers them one and all. Be proud, stand united, don't let your memories fall. Confidence is what we need so that nations trust each other and all races of mankind teach each, treat each other as a brother. Food for every living thing by nature is provided. If we could only see it was equally divided. Woods and streams and mountains high, the sea and golden shore, were never ever meant to be the cause of senseless bloody war or race for powerful armament and sacrifice of youth. But our world of true contentment built on faith and trust and truth. Peace to the world. Ho oh, yay! Ho oh, yay! Ho oh, yay! God save the Queen! This is the BBC Home Service. We're interrupting programmes to make the following announcement. It is understood that in accordance with arrangements between the three great powers, an official announcement will be broadcast by the Prime Minister at three o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday afternoon, the 8th of May. In view of this fact, tomorrow, Tuesday, will be treated as Victory in Europe Day and will be regarded as a holiday. The day following, Wednesday, the 9th of May, will also be a holiday. His Majesty the King will broadcast to the peoples of the British Empire and Commonwealth tomorrow, Tuesday, at 9 p.m. British Double Summer Time. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And did the continents divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O oh, clouds, unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Yesterday morning at 2.41 a.m. at General Eisenhower's headquarters, General Jodl, the representative of the German High Command and of Grand Admiral Dönitz, the designated head of the German state, signed the act of unconditional surrender of all German land, sea, and air forces in Europe to the Allied Expeditionary Force and simultaneously to the Soviet High Command. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. In September 1939, as part of the government organised evacuation of children from London, a party of 500 Jewish children and staff from the Jewish Secondary School in Amherst Park, London, were evacuated to Shefford in Bedfordshire. This was part of Operation Pied Piper. The headmistress of this school was Dr Judith Grumfeld. Initially, the relationship between the two communities was difficult, and although most refugees were billeted in Shefford, others stayed in Campton, Clifton, Mepishaw and Stockfold.
Those who provided foster homes had no experience of the Jewish community and its laws and customs, especially the dietary laws, and there was some disappointment when food which had been prepared as a welcome was left untouched. However, over time they became familiar with the Jewish traditions and the relationships between the two sides grew stronger. It was noted that the foster parents came to consider the children as their own and evacuees were respected for remaining loyal to their own religious traditions in a very strange environment. As the foster parents became more familiar with the Jewish traditions, they were able to encourage their evacuees to observe them. Also, the townspeople developed a warm relationship with the teachers and the rabbis at the school. The children stayed in Shefford until the end of the war, returning to London in August 1945. I'm Reverend Ronnie, the Vicar of St Michael's Church here in Shefford. We so miss being open to all at the moment. And although the building is closed, we, the church, its people, are definitely still open. We are a praying church online and in our homes. If you'd like to know more or to ask for prayer, please see our Facebook page. St Michael's Church loves being part of this community in Shefford. Last year, when we were making our oral history videos for our Tower Heritage Project, two people spoke to us about the original VE Day celebrations. Do you remember the celebrations at the end of World War Two? Oh, Do you yes. remember what Shepherd did at yes. the end of World War Two? Yes. Um, brings my dad into it again. He was... Um, in command of the of 27 ASD. That was one of the supply, supply depots, ammunition supply depots for D-Day. And um, at the end of the Second World War, um, party was organised for the those up to the age of um, 14. Well, I just slipped into that group because my 15th birthday was just a month away. <laughs> and uh, there was a concert in the school hall and um, later on in the evening, my dad organised a fireworks display and um, then in the evening there was dancing in the high street and uh, that went on for a second night as well. And being 14 going on 15, I fitted into it all. <laughs> <laughs> Child and grown up. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And um, yes. Uh, Do you remember where the fireworks were? Yes, on the school playing field. Oh. Yeah. So, which school are we talking about here? It was Robert Bloomfield. Yes. A wonderful time for me because. Of my experiences through the war and um, so that was very special for me and also it was repeated um, in August for VJ Day as well and um, that was that was really the end of it all yes 
Do you remember yeah. the end of the war? We I remember all the street parties and everything. Oh yes, every street had a party. VE75 is hugely significant here, where many people remember still friends and loved ones lost and wounded in Europe. We have a tradition of commemorating the service and sacrifice of all those who fought for our freedoms and survival then. And we are hugely sad at the loss of the opportunity to celebrate this as we would have liked on this occasion. In these days, we are engaged in celebrating the service and sacrifice of those who are fighting now for the survival of individuals and to keep our country and its inhabitants safe and well in very different circumstances. They are showing us once again the eternal significance of living out the words of Jesus. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. As we mark VE 75, it is good to take time to honour again those who decades ago expressed that spirit of service and sacrifice, which has allowed us all to enjoy and share the freedom we have today. Shepherd is good at honouring our promise. We will remember them. And we look forward to saying together on the 8th of May, and perhaps later in the year too, to those who gave so much, we thank you. of the cessation of hostilities in the European war zone cannot be remembered as we would wish to. It has been proposed that we all plan to have a celebration on the weekend of August 16th to 18th, which will also mark the end of the Second World War in Asia, the true end of the Second World War. Sadly, we will need to see how other events play out before we can plan that event. So for now, at 3 p.m., or more correctly, 1500 hours on Friday, May the 8th. Please join me in a toast to those brave people who were involved in the Second World War. To those who gave so much, we thank you. For men who gave the ultimate upon some foreign lands, a poppy for a headstone now growing in the sand. The victory in Europe, about which now I write, it made us free. I'm glad I didn't have to go and fight. We're thankful for the good generation, the ones still living yet. Keep talking of the E Day and won't let us forget. Uh.